What's up guys? How you doing? Brain Smasher back again with four reviews for you today. While I flap my gums, God, I love saying that. That never is going to get old. That's probably going to get old. We're going to be listening to Septic Death. Attention. This came out on Pussmort. I have no idea when. I don't really listen to this album very much, but it fucking slays. It's just... You know, these guys, I guess their ilk is really the hardcore punk scene of the late 80s, which is something I know nothing about. And for some, there's just something about Septic Death. They bring a lot more interesting things to the table style-wise, both with their artwork, which is amazing. Pusshead's fucking drawing is just amazing. I, I just get lost in his work sometimes. But Septic Death is great. He was an awesome vocalist. It's just such a theatrical take on... Uh, that sort of 80s hardcore punk kind of thing. And uh, I've always been kind of curious to know. I'd be interested in seeing like a documentary on what a hardcore band from fucking Boise, Idaho was influenced by back then. Um, you might know Puss Head's artwork from doing uh, Metallica album covers. So yeah, that is Attention. All right, we've got four albums of very different ilks. Let's start off with what I just got in last week. Oransi Pazuzu with Valanilu. Been meaning to pick this up for a really long time, and I was buying uh, something from 20 Bucks Spin. Decided to throw this in the cart as well. And I forgot how much I love this record. Uh, probably need to pick up the rest of their stuff too. But if you don't know, or if you want to hear my take on these guys, I don't, they, they're definitely doing some very interesting stuff. And I think they're probably going to be a big influence on a lot of bands if they aren't already. But uh, in the next 10 or 15 years, you know, uh, it's this album really is one of the most unique uh, style wise style changes or, you know, takes on the black metal finished black metal genre in the last uh, 10 or 15 years or so. There's a little bit of like psychedelic kind of surf guitar melded in there and I was even listening to this in the car the other day and my girlfriend said that it kind of sounded like Tool and I do love Tool but at first my knee jerk reaction was to, say, was to think like no way there's wait a minute and I got to listening to it and seriously there was there was a part at least that sounded quite a bit like something Tool would do uh, and I kind of started to realize over and over that there is a lot of stuff um, going on in this album that sounds like stuff that Tool would do uh, but those ideas obviously are a lot more musical and a lot more uh, grounded in the black metal genre. So I really like this record. I've had it on MP3 for probably since it came out or so. Um, and yeah, I really, really like this album. Check it out if you're not familiar. Um, it's, you know, saying that it's like psychedelic surf guitar in black metal sounds like the most outlandish fucking bullshit thing you could say. But honestly, I, I really think a lot of people... Uh, who would be scared off by its notoriety for that would probably dig it. It's not all that weird of a thing. Um, and I think it's a really exciting, refreshing kind of take on that kind of style. Next, I picked this up in Chicago this weekend. Uh, had this, I don't know, MP3 or YouTube or whatever for a little while. It's been out for quite a while. This is Venomous Concept, Poisoned Apple. Century Media put this out. 10 years ago now it kind of seems like the new one from venomous concept um i don't really know if there's like a this is like a tribute kind of band to a certain style or whatnot um but i really do like this so the lineup really should tell you what the style is like it's shane Embry from napalm death on guitar dan lilker on bass kevin sharp from brutal tooth truth on vocals brutal tooth we got a couple of those and dan herrera from I think Fear Factory. Is that who that is? I'm going to look this up. <laughs> I was wrong. Dan Herrera from Napalm Death on drums. I what is the 
Ray Herrera is the guy from... Uh, he played on the first Phobia, and he played in Fear Factory after that. Anyway, so yeah, this is quite a bit like Napalm Death, um, but a lot more fun, a lot more breathing room. I'm not really even a fan of Napalm Death whatsoever. Really, none of their albums do a whole lot for me. But this is just super, super fun, stupid, sort of... Kind of crusty, kind of DBD, just kind of fucking punky, weird death metal. Um, it's really all over the place, but it's super fun. The songs are short and stupid and memorable uh, and aggressive as fuck. It's just super fun. The kind of thing you would put on in your car, roll the windows down, and just speed off into the night. And this was super cheap at Reckless, Reckless Records. I'm not sure what's with the whole concept of the poisoned apple cartoon shit. This I haven't even looked at this thing yet. Anyways, but it, it doesn't sound at all like it looks. It's a really fun listen. So, next we've got Misery with Revel in Blasphemy. Uh, this was just reissued by The Crypt or Dark Symphonies. Um, and I had no idea that it was all that rare. I had seen this album cover in like SOD Magazine in the 90s uh, a lot. And, you know, this album cover... This album artwork and this style is just the most forgettable fucking garbage. And so, it suffers quite a bit because I never would have listened to this album had I not known that The Crypt was going to reissue this record. So the timeline, I guess, on this, this came out in 1996, 97, uh, on Warhead Records. And I had seen this in a record store in Peoria back in like March or February or something like that. Picked it up, thought, eh, it looks stupid. Nah, I'm not going to grab it. So once I found out that Ted from the Crypt was going to reissue it, I decided to pick it up. It's actually kind of valuable. Uh, but it's just really stupid, sort of Aussie, gory death metal. And it's pretty good. Uh, I'm kind of curious to check out their other records because this album, it's kind of sloppy. It's kind of messy. Um, I would kind of like to hear maybe a little bit more refined style. Um, but yeah, it's the kind of thing that was going on in, like, the late 90s, every death metal band wanted to be as brutal as possible and just as fucking abysmal and nasty as possible. And so they they weren't, but everybody was kind of trying to do that. And that's kind of where Misery falls in line. And Australian bands somehow kind of have this knack about them where they, they managed to pull off some sort of more carnal, more just... I guess, believable sort of outback style to their black metal or death metal or whatnot. Um, and Misery definitely falls in line with that kind of style. So also, at the Dotheim's Guard show, after Bulzer had played, it's fucking boring, I went outside and uh, just wanted to get some fresh air. Some dude came up to me, said he knew me from YouTube. We got to talking. Another guy came up to me, said he knew me from YouTube. <clears throat> and I had just gotten there, so I had missed uh, Dumal, Finn, maybe another band, but I also missed the set from Suffering Hour. So a couple more dudes come out, and the guy that I was talking to, I forget his name, but uh, he wanted to introduce me to these guys, and they had, like, makeup on their face, so I was, I was thinking they were probably one of the bands that had just played. And so he says, these dudes are in Suffering Hour. He starts talking to them about my YouTube channel. <laughs> it was awesome. It was weird. But uh, super cool dudes wound up... Uh, how did it work out? I don't know. I wanted to bum a smoke from somebody, and it turned out that the guy from St. Paul bought a, <laughs> bought a CD from them for me so that I could smoke the cigarette. It was just, it was super nice. It was kind of fun. Um, and, you know, I didn't really expect to, for this fucking Suffering Hour album to be fucking awesome. I told those guys to check out my channel because I would review it, not knowing what I would think of it. But, man, this fucking thing is amazing. Came out on uh, Blood Harvest. And I honestly cannot fucking fathom why a lot of other YouTubers or reviewers or whatnot aren't going sh fucking crazy about Suffering Hour. First of all, I didn't realize they were also playing fucking MDF this weekend as well. Uh, but uh, I think it was Dan Klein from Finn that I was talking to that described him as 
kind of sounding like Inquisition, Black Witchery, kind of stuff like that. But I guess I would only agree with that in that they're really intense uh, and they're really uh, riff heavy. But what after listening to it two or three times already since I got it, I think the best comparison I would make is the Gore Guts riff wise. It's super technical, but it has that sort of like underworldly or otherworldly sort of dissonance going on riff wise. It's got this like serpentine sort of unmelodic, but super technical sort of riffing about it. I don't really know enough about guitars to describe exactly what they're doing, but it sounds so fucking strange and amazing. They've got this just, it's just a hundred miles an hour all the time. It's super intense and really weird. And they switch tempos and styles and different tonalities up all the time. It's just a really interesting listen. The album is called in passing Ascension and you better fucking get it. It's super, super good. It is also on vinyl from blood harvest. I kind of wish I would have picked it up on vinyl as well. Uh, when I was at the show, but another album that I would compare it to or what it, that it reminds me of that I think a lot of people aren't familiar with is, um, I think it's the last album from FL Duath called Hemmed by Light and Shaped by Darkness. And it also has this serpentine sort of guitar work where it's like they just abandoned a song structure to make something just insanely intense and just draw you into this fucking dark underworld sort of metal. And this is a really unique listen. Do check out Suffering Hour and I hope the dudes from Suffering Hour managed to find this review by way of whatever. So that does it for these four reviews. Thanks for joining me again. Check them out in the links down below, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.